praise God for that beautiful song, The Rugged Cross. What a wonderful illustration of God's love. When we look at that cross, we think about what he did. That he sent his son, Jesus, to come down on that cross to free us. Ain't that a wonderful thing? But you know what I want to talk today about? You know, a lot of people, even myself, has gone through a time or many times in my life to where adversity seems to be hurting me and making me depressed and kind of make me ask questions. But I truly believe here today that God had me to read Genesis and the life and story of Joseph and how Joseph got put in these trials and adversity and hadn't done anything. And sometimes I look at our lives and, and how different people give up so quick and they blame God for things going on in their life. Sometimes we can't help. Life is going to throw us curveballs and there's nothing we can do. But thank God that he has sent his son Jesus to comfort us. And thank God that we have a way out of this mess. And thank God that he has prepared a place for us where one day, if he doesn't come back first, that he will give us a place to lay our heads down where we have no wants and we don't have thirst for worldly things and we don't have any more pain or cancer or sickness. And that uh, everything we do, we wake up and we are happy and content with so much that he has given us. You know, this is a long uh, scripture right here in Genesis. And it goes to cross-reference three other uh, books of the Bible. And it's a long ways to go. And I pray here this morning that, that the Holy Spirit will work in me and, and have me say what he wants me to say today. And I pray through these scriptures today that some life, or somebody out there would draw closer to Christ through this. Or you will look at your troubles and say, okay, God is just molding me and he's shaping me. And I need not to blame God, but I need to understand here today that God is always with me. Through the times of hardness and through the times of sickness. Or sometimes we may be in the world and just ask questions. Why God? That's a big question today. A lot of people say, why me God? What did I do to deserve this, God? But God is still loving God. And God is not letting you go through this situation by yourself. Mm -hmm. And that he's always walking with you and holding you and, and guiding you and comforting you. And so you need not to feel like you're alone. But so many times we do feel alone. We feel lost. And we feel like maybe it's something we've done to deserve this. And we can't figure out what's going on in our life. Seems like things are crashing down and we got no control and one bad thing after another and after another and after another. I look back at a part of my life where I got hooked on drugs and, and alcohol was my drink that I used to fill that thirst that I had. And I had so many questions, God, why did this happen to me? God, why did you allow drugs and alcohol to come in my life and you're about to take my life? And I always raised my hand and said, God, if you love me, why are you letting this come and affect my life? If you love me, God, what have I done to deserve this? And I think in this world, a lot of people are asking those same things. But you need to know here today, and you need to honestly know, that God has never left us by ourselves. And that God knows we have a need. But God has a better plan for our life, and we have to see his point of view. Because his point of view is hard to understand, but he sees the righteous future in our life. And he sees what this hardship is going to do and how strong it's going to make you. And how you can use this hardship to go out here and help somebody else that's going through what you went through. And that's a good thing. And we just need to look at everything we go through. It's a purpose and it's a meaning behind it. So we need not to blame God for every situation in our life. A lot of times we need to look at what we've done in our life. And look at the things that we have brought upon our life. And maybe God is using those things that we have brought uh, into our life. And allowing those things to try to be a stumbling block in our life. So we can learn from it. And so we can turn away from it. And so we can use that to help somebody else that's going down that straying path. But you know, through this uh, life and story of Joseph, several things happen here. And we need to understand that when somebody's doing good beside you, that jealousy can be a big factor in the situation. What do you mean, Jamie, jealousy? Well, jealousy caused a perfect family here to pretty much go, go wild in chaos. 
and it caused lying, it caused hiding, and it caused telling a lie on a lie because they had done something so horrible that they didn't want nobody to find out the truth. You know, we deceive ourselves every day with lies. And we, 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 we're jealous of other people that may have it look better than we are. But I am thankful here today that God has given me life. And I am thankful today that I don't have to deal with that situation with jealousy because I've learned a long time ago. Thank God that he's using somebody. Thank God that somebody's life is being touched and used to help other unbelievers out here. You know, this, this thing that brothers on Joseph, the brothers, they were so jealous of him that they even start to plot death. And um, that gets mighty bad when your heart gets so envy and your, your life gets so full of jealousy that you want to get rid of the person that's getting all the attention. Now you have to understand a lot of us has felt like that. It's no big secret. Let's be real here today. Let's, let's, let's tell the truth. All of us has been jealous at some point in our life or something or somebody or something. Yeah, but we have to realize that everybody deserves to be happy and everybody deserves a pat on the back. So just because we're not getting one, we just need to thank God that he has given us today. And be supportive of that other brother, of that other sister that may be going out here doing stuff for the Lord. And just be thankful that God is using that person here today. But it's a lot of real estate we got to get in today. It's a lot of stuff that I want to talk about. And it's like the pages are growing up here. But praise God, he's going to give you what he needs me to say. But listen to these six things right here. First, Joseph was a diligent. He was a hard worker. And Joseph caught character. They may have stripped, stripped his pretty jacket off, and they may have taken that away when they threw him in that cistern, which is basically a pit. And he may have lost his coat and may have lost his dignity, and, and, and his uh, life was betrayed. But Joseph had a wonderful character about him. And Joseph strived to do everything he could in the best way that he could. And he never let adversity get in the way, but he still, even through the tough times, even when he was sold into slavery, even when he went to Potiphar's house, not only did he get betrayed by his family, not only did he get thrown in a pit to leave to die, and not only did he get sold into slavery, but the very person that picked up Joseph and gave him a new lifestyle and made him one of the top uh, slaves, not only that, but then his wife, Potiphar's wife, come to him and wanted him to lay down with her. But he turned away from that sin and he went out the door and he did not lay down with her. But guess what Joseph has to face now? He has to face a lie. He has to face disappointment and all this stuff that he has already went through. Now Joseph is being accused of rape. Now Joseph has been accused of uh, uh, attempting rape or rape on part of his wife and now he is starting to face a lot more adversity and trouble. What would you do in your life if you were going through the things that Joseph went through? How could you handle it? How would your character be? What would you do? But Joseph, even though he was a slave, he still worked hard and he still held on to his dignity and he still had good character. Now, I want to stop real quick here and I want to go to uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, chapter 15, 58, and I want you to listen to what Paul says about our work and our service. And then I'm going to cross-reference that with James, chapter 1, 2 through 5. But we need to look at this on the 1 Corinthians 15, 58, and we need to understand that everything we do for the Lord will never go in void. And everything we do, we must work earnestly. We must work hard at what we do. We should take pride in what we do and, and, and doing the service for uh, Jesus Christ. And we need to be hard at it and, and uh, diligent like Joseph was. But let's go over that real quick. And this is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. But it goes on to say, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise God that is a powerful scripture. Amen. To know that everything you do for the Lord will never be in vain, but will always be noticeable. It will always glorify Him. We have to make sure that no matter how hard this life gets, or no matter what it gives you, that you've got to be diligent, and that you have to work hard in the labor for the Lord. 
so that the Lord was going to bring you through. Knowing that everything you did was going to glorify him. And knowing that it would be for nothing. So many times we do things for this world. And we get nothing in return. We lose, we invest in things, and we lose our money, and we can't get it back. But I'm telling you here today, Paul is trying to tell us, anything that we do or invest in the Lord will never come back void. Amen. And that will always be known to him and appreciated by him. And that he would always be uh, through uh, uh, working with us and through us through these hard times. Now listen right here. It says, our work for God has value and meaning. Because he is the one behind it. You have to know God is behind this. And God is going to push you through it. And God's going to give you the strength to get through any uh, problem that you have here today. Now, if you take this a little farther and you go to the book of James. James is uh, addressing the, uh, the listeners here. And James is trying to tell you here today. That, that don't never feel bad because adversity strikes you. Don't ever feel bad when persecution comes on you. But James was trying to tell us here today, be thankful that when somebody persecutes you. Be thankful when you go through adversities. Because when you're going through a trial, you have to understand that God has allowed that trial in your life. That means that God has put trust in you and that he is molding you and he is teaching you to be a better, better servant for him. So never look at your troubles and say, why me? Never look at your troubles and say, why well, couldn't it have been somebody else? I can't deal with this. I'm not the one, God. But God is saying, yes, you're the one. You're the one that I trust with this adversity. You're the one that I trust with this trial. So do, dig in there and trust in me. Let's go right on over to James chapter 1, 2 through 5. But then this is getting, this is good right here. I was just going to read two, but I'll be... Uh, not telling you the whole truth, so I want to go from two to five. But listen right here. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Listen to that. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. We're not going to have it easy. You may go home today and have to go through a trial. But listen to what James is saying. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. I just want to stop there today, and I want to thank Jesus Christ for what he has done in my life. I want to thank him for going to the cross, and I want to thank him for saving my life, to keep me out of that bondage of hell, and to give me life, and to give me wants, and give me a thirst for the knowledge of him. Praise God today that he loved me enough. Praise God that he loves you listening here. And thank God in Facebook that he loves you. And I pray today that if you have not a knowledge of God, that you will have a knowledge through this scripture and that you will fall on your knees and that you will call on him and that you would ask him to come in your life and save the wretched person that you are. And thank God for not looking at your past and thank God for not bringing up what you've done to this person. But praise God that he loves you enough to die on that cross and to forgive you of your sins and use his life as a living, holy sacrifice for you. Now, what other person would do that? Not many, I would think. But verse 3, knowing the testing of your faith produces patience. Now, I've spent a lot of time in my life in addiction, but I learned to have patience. God taught me to have patience. Because sometimes God is not going to work fast. And it might be something he's trying to teach you. He may be trying to get you to sit still. He may be trying to see you look at your life as he sees it. And he's trying to teach you to be patient. Because a lot of times we want that trial to hurry up and move on. And it's sitting there like a hurricane and will not move. But I'm telling you today, through them trials, you need to learn to have patience here. But verse 4, but let patience have this perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. God, if you want wisdom, he's going to give you wisdom. And you need to use that wisdom to glorify him. But God's not going to give you wisdom if you don't want to use it. Now, I'm telling you here today, I don't care what nobody's going through. It's a way out. If you ever looked at a storm that comes, the sun will be out, then a dark cloud will come, it pours down raining and thunders, it gets nasty, but then the sun pops out and it goes back. 
That's the way our life is, but sometimes the storm lasts longer than others. But we're lacking nothing. He gives us everything we need to get through the storms. He gives us everything we need to be patient and wait. But just think about that today. When things are not moving in your life, don't rush it. Because God is molding you and he is molding your life and he is putting everything in order like it should be. And if you wait earnestly and if you wait patiently, then you're going to see the mighty work of God was not a mistake. Because God is behind your problems. He's with you through your problems. And it's nothing that God don't see in your life. So he knows your hurts. And he knows your wants. And he knows that we need to make this in a hurry. But thank God that he didn't rush my addiction. Thank God that he didn't rush that in my life. Because I wouldn't be the person that he wanted me to be if I had given up. Amen. God, God knew what I was going to come through. He knew that I was going to make it. He knows the beginning, the middle, and the end of your life. So he knows what's going to happen. But, but just think of it this way. Be, be blessed. Be happy. And be shouting joy that, that God had, has allowed adversity in your life. But it says, verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Praise God! That he trusts us enough to give us wisdom. Thank God that he wants us to know more and to go out here and glorify him. But you have to be very careful here that you don't do anything to uh, gain reproach for God. And it's a big thing. God wants you to use this wisdom to go out here and, and help save this dying world. And to be able to let people know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to use your life willingly. And be honored in everything you do. And be happy in everything you do. No matter what comes your way. I was thinking the other day when it says, pick up your cross and follow me. You know, and, and Jesus told the rich man to go sell all his goods and, and come back. But you know, I was thinking about that thing. The rich man's holding on to something, but Jesus wanted to see which one he's going to do. He wanted to see if the, if the richness controlled him or did the man control the riches. See, there's a big difference there. We need to be willing to give up everything for Christ. Amen. And we need to be willing to not think twice about it. But, but, but Lord help us, a lot of us will we'll think about it, but we're, we're juggling um, like a seesaw. Well, I need this. I don't want to give it up. And I need God over here, but I need this over here. We have to be content and we, not have, to, we have to be a lot of humility. We have to eat a lot of humility. And just thank God that we have what we need. And, and, and you'll be okay. Look at what God has done for you in your life. And look at where he has brought you. And just be thankful for what you got. And if you don't have what you got, but just think of what God wants you to have. And that'll make a big difference. You know, I look at people's lives. And they, don't, they may look happy on the outside because they, they got all these things. But they're dying on the inside. They're dying. I look at people's lives and sometimes when they go buy stuff, they buy stuff and buy stuff. And then they're looking at it and they're happy. But to me, it's like being on drugs. You can't never get happy and you keep spending money and you keep uh, going through money and, and you keep looking back and you ain't never satisfied. We had to get to a point. The only way we can be happy right now and right now, we have to be satisfied in the Lord. Amen. We had to be thankful right now for what we got. And if we don't have a dime to our name, be thankful that you have the free gift of salvation. Amen. Be thankful that God loved you so much that his sin has begotten his son to die for you. I know I keep saying that, but I believe there's somebody out there that needs to hear that God sent his beautiful, wonderful, loving son. And Jesus used his life in order to save yours. Amen. What better illustration is that than you can deal with today? I mean, what, what money can buy that? What money can do anything, there's nothing out there that can buy that. That freedom and that peace and that gift and love and um, the endurance that he went through for you and I. It's a big deal to me. I truly believe in the cross. The cross is what saved me from drugs. I just thank God today that God didn't see me as somebody and say, cast away. And that he didn't say, you're not good enough to be one of mine. And I thank God that he is using my life. 
And thank God that he has given me wisdom. And thank God that he has made me willing to want to be used here today. Now we have to understand here today. I'm getting way off topic, but I'm just giving you what the Lord wants you to hear today. I can't help that I've jumped my notes. I can't help that I haven't flipped a page. But I truly believe that, that God wants somebody to know here today that you can be used. And that you don't have to look at your past and be afraid and, and be embarrassed and, and be scared of what other people are going to say. It, when it, at the end of the day, it's all of what God wants you to do. And you should be pleasing only God, not this world to start with. So don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the people who doubt you. You know your heart. And God knows your heart. And you know what you want to do for the Lord. And if God has got a purpose for you, then you start right now serving God. Don't ever be worrying about what people say. Amen. But I'm thinking about this right here. And James, he's talking about, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in various trials. Now, how many of us can honestly right now say how we're going to count it joy? Are you going to count it joy if you go home today? This is the strengthening in, in the, what the power of Scripture can do to your life if you learn it and study it. If you had no hope today, if you had no peace, and you didn't know Jesus, Lord, help you when you go home today and you have a trial in your life. Because it's just you and that trial. But, but my friends and my fellow believers of Christ, when you have Jesus Christ embedded in your heart, it's nothing that you can't get through. Amen. It's nothing that, that you can give up on because he has already won the victory. And that he has already made a place for you here today. And we need not to be ashamed of nothing. And we just need to look at our troubles sometimes and say, okay, here's the deal. If this don't pan out good for me, then I know I got another place that I'm going, that everything is pure, righteous, and good, and that I ain't going to have to go through none of these trials no more. We have to get in a mindset of Christ, and we need to focus on what Christ has done for us, and we also need to focus on that place that he has prepared for us. Oh, man. But whenever we face trials, we need to know that if one thing is absolutely true, God is producing something good and excellent in you. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Now I want to jump back over here. Work my way back to Genesis. And like I said this morning, there's a lot of area and there's a lot of ground you've got to cover. And I'm just trying to get through and decipher it. But think about the things that Joseph went through. You know, and I thank God that, that I had a, a way to illustrate Joseph's life. And then that I've had a few things in my life where I've been questioning God, like, God, you called me to do something, but what's going on? And there we go. It's taking me back to being patient. It's taking me back to saying, wait a minute. God is, is training me. God is teaching me through the hard times, through the good times, through the times where you don't think nobody's supporting you, through the times where you see people supporting you. But understand here today, I have realized, and I have uh, listened to Joseph's story and read it several times in the past. But it's never touched me like it has touched me today. Because I see a man that was diligent, and I see a man that, that did everything he could to make it through. And he made it through. But see, sometimes we get in a rut, and we don't look at the future. We look at what we're dealing with now. Now, think if Joseph had given up and just died and killed himself. And after the first incident, would have been hard enough for me when his family took him through him in the system. But, but I would have almost given up. But, but look at all the other adversities that he went through and didn't ever give up. And look what God did for him at the end. My goodness. He ended up saving two nations. And he started off as a person left to die in a pit. But now, at the latter part of his life, he has saved two nations. Yes. And not only that, you have to understand that, that, that Joseph's family and his brothers had come up because everybody was starving. And here they are coming up and having a kneel and didn't recognize Joseph at first. But here's Joseph had every uh, opportunity to cast his brothers away and say, you know what? Y'all put me through misery. Y 
y'all cost me everything. Y'all stole my dreams. Y'all stole everything. I don't want y'all gods, gods, soldiers. Take these people and have them killed. He had every opportunity to turn that way. But guess what? Joseph's character was the main purpose of his life. Because Joseph never give up when the hard times come. Now I want to say this today. I see our big churches. I see Christians right now running. They're hiding. They're scared. But you read these scriptures. Christ has taught us over the years that these days was coming. We need to be deep in the word of God and we need to know what these scriptures are saying. And we need to understand that we can't go out here. That, that we're using our lives to show the rest of the world how strong we Christians are. So we need to make sure that when we're going out here, that, that even though it's the coronavirus, but we're shouting to the Lord. The Lord has victory. The Lord has victory. And I am a mighty strong Christian because Jesus loves me. Jesus has died for me. But it is scary, y'all. It is scary. But if you know that you know where you're going, it makes life a whole lot easier to deal with. Amen. So, so many people are scared. And, and I'm trying to tell people through scriptures. Do not be afraid. Understand that God is with you just like he was with Joseph most of all Joseph's life. He was always with him. And he was always uh, building his road and preparing his road for him. But we are like Joseph. We look and give up before we can see God's blessing. Now, Joseph, you have to understand, don't you admit here today that if you were Joseph, Joseph had every right to just give up? Yes, he did, but he didn't. And that's the, that's the beautiful plot of this story. And that at the end, after Joseph went through all this, even after being plotted and um, accused of raping Potiphar's wife, Look at the ending part where, where Joseph become mighty and he ended up saving two nations. See, God had a plan for his life even through the beginning. God's got a plan for your life here today. You just got to figure out what that is and you have to figure out how to adjust to it and know that he is never going to let you down here. Now, I, I come so far here this morning, but I can't stop this without telling you. What are you facing today? What is causing you to, to break your character? What, what is something in your life that if you say, Jamie, if I had this one thing I could get out of my life, I would be a better Christian. I would come to church more. I would start being more happier. Or I wouldn't fuss as much. I would be in a better mood. What is that one thing that you could get rid of today that would make you a better person? Well, think about it. Pray about it. And you need to figure out how to get it out of your life. You need to strive to want to do better. I look at my life as a drug addict, a past drug addict. And I look, I could have given up when the devil told me I was done, but I didn't give up. And I'm here to tell you it was a hard road, a hard road. But I knew Jesus Christ was with me. And I made sure when I got ready to fight that battle, I repented my life. I asked Christ to come back in my heart and that I wanted a better work, walk with him. And I learned to depend on him. And you have to understand, when you depend on Jesus, you're going to grow a fellowship that you just wouldn't believe. Amen. It's going to be a bond. It's going to be like a, a better than a best friend that's going to always be there and guide you and comfort you and love you and help you out of crisis. Yeah. Praise yeah. God for that love that he gives us. But you can only receive that love if you let Jesus come in your heart now. You have to understand here today, I want to make sure, and I want to spend a little time today on salvation. And I want you to know here today, that no matter what you're going through, Jesus loves you. And don't blame Jesus. Don't blame nothing, nobody else. You just be thankful today for what you do have. Look around your life and look at other people's lives, and you will come back to yours and say, thank you God for mine, because I sure don't want my next door neighbor's problems. It's a lot of things to be thankful here today. Amen. With that said, I want to take us to the sinner's prayer. And I want to make sure that somebody has the opportunity to be able to have that peace. To be able to fight your trials. And be able to have what James talking about. The joy to be able to withstand uh, the trials that come to you. And the only way you can do that and be and have that joy is to have Jesus Christ in your heart. So when I, when I do this today, I want you to repeat after me. 
I can't do it for you. I can't make you do it. This is a conviction of uh, God, and this needs to be done with you and him. So repeat after me, and that way it makes it special, and that way you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jesus. Dear Jesus, I admit that I am a son. Jesus, I admit that my life, I can't win it, I can't fight it without you. And Jesus, I know you died on the cross. And I know you died, and I know you rose the third day. Jesus, would you please come in my heart and save me today? Oh, thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for uh, using your life to save me. And thank you, Jesus, for coming in my heart. If you prayed that today, you are saved. And I pray with that, that's not the end of the road, that you will get baptized, that you will join a Bible teaching, preaching church, that you will get in the word of God and be discipled and learn all you can learn about what God has done through this wonderful book for you. And that you would uh, use your life to shine and be that bright light to shine in a dark world. So I thank y'all for coming today. I will be praying for y'all, but please uh, be with Miss Ellen today. She told me she had some stuff going on. Pray for her and her family. Be with Jordan Harvey as he goes through some obstacles and adversities in his life. And just uh, strengthen him and his family. God knows what it is. There's no need for us to try to figure it out. But God knows the hurt and he knows what families are going through. Be with Karen Turner as she lost her husband, Burke. And um, Bert was a strong man. I always respected Bert because you got what you saw, and that was the truth from a man. And I thank God that I had an opportunity to meet the man and be able to fellowship with him and talk to him. But I just want you to be with, ask to be with that family, call and check on Karen, see how she's doing, and just uh, lift her up at this time. And we just praise God for Karen and Grace Ministries. So we just want to let you know, Karen, from Grace Ministries, we love you, we care about you. And um, we pray that the Lord will give you comfort and peace this morning. And with that said, let's go to the Lord and pray. Dear Heavenly, most gracious Father, Lord, thank you for touching us with that wonderful scriptures, Lord. And Lord, just teach us how to use our lives to be able to, to be a light in this dark world. And Lord, just lift up the families here today that feel lost. Uh, Lord, we just pray when, when grace opens up and it's time. That, Lord, you will keep us safe here and that you will send people here, Lord, and show us something that we just can't believe. We know, Lord, that you're going to do a mighty work in this building. You're going to use everybody at Grace to go out here and, and just shine their light for you and just, just uh, be a voice for you. And, Lord, we just can't wait to see what you're going to do. We can't wait. So with that said, y'all have a blessed evening. Y'all spend time with your families. Love on one another because tomorrow ain't promised. So you do everything you can today to be with your family. And so with that said, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Thank you.